To your naked eye and the camera, these two white lights appear the same, but are they the same? We can use a simple, easy to build device called a CD spectroscope to take a closer look. Notice the small eyepiece at the bottom of the cardboard tube underneath the left light. When we look through the eyepiece, we see a continuous color spectrum from red and yellow to green and blue. When we look at the light on the right, we also see red, green, and blue, but as a set of thin horizontal lines. So how are the two lights different? One is an incandescent bulb, the other is fluorescent. Watch the rest of this video to learn how to build and do investigations with your own CD spectroscope. Hi, I'm Paul Doherty from the Exploratorium Teacher Institute. And today, I'm going to have you build a spectrometer, something that I call a truth teller for light because it splits light up into its spectral components, into different wavelengths of light. This spectrometer has four major parts. It's got a compact disc, which is the diffraction grating, which breaks up light into its colors. It's got a tube, which shields from outside interfering light. It's got a slit on the end that allows through just the light that you want to analyze. And it's got a hole for you to look through to see the spectrum. In order to use the spectrometer, you point the slit at the light source. And then the light from the source goes through the slit, bounces off the CD, and is broken into its various colors, into the wavelengths that make up the light. If you look at different light sources, you'll see different patterns of wavelengths of light, the spectrum of light from that light source. Stick around and I'll show you how to build this, how to use it, and explain to you what the science is behind how it works and give you suggestions about what other things you can do with it. The tools I use to build the spectrometer were a wood saw, a metal straight edge, a razor knife, a pair of scissors, and some tape. You'll need to get a poster tube. This is a three inch diameter poster tube. They come at about three foot lengths. You can cut them roughly in half. That'll give you a tube about 18 inches long or 0.45 meters long. You'll need the two end caps to shield out light from the tube. You'll need a compact disc. The ones we found to work best are the recordable kind that are blank. Any CD will work, but these work the best. Sometimes they have a bluish coating on them. You want the ones that look silvery bright. You'll need a piece of construction paper, which we're going to cut our slit in. And you'll need our cutting guide, which will be available online. To cut the slot for the compact disc, you'll take our cutting guide and wrap it around the end of the tube. Get it lined up with the end and straight. Then take a piece of tape and tape it down. To cut the slot, put it securely on a surface. Bring in your saw and cut slowly and carefully along the marked line. When you've cut all the way down, you're ready to insert the compact disc. To cut the eyepiece, you're going to use the razor knife, and you're going to cut all the way through that black square, and then poke out the cardboard. To make the slit, the first thing we're going to do is cut a wider slot in the end cap. So I'm going to use my metal straight edge to mark two lines, and then I'm going to use my razor knife to actually cut out the slot. Okay. The next thing is we're going to cut out a circular disc of black. First I'll trace it with my pen. That gets me the outside outline. Then I'll use the scissors, but I'll cut inside that line a little bit. And now I have my disc of paper that will slide nicely inside my end cap. So next, I'm going to make a line across a diameter of my black. There it is. And then I'm going to use my razor knife to cut a slit, nice straight slit down the middle, perhaps a millimeter wide. And there I have my nice slit. So we'll take our piece of paper 
with a slit and we'll line it right up with the slot so the middle of the slits in the middle of the slot I'll put a piece of tape off to the side to keep it from rotating so now it will maintain its alignment and then I will take it and put it into my tube first I'm going to take my cutting guide off you'll see I've cut my slot for the compact disc I'm going to punch out the eye hole and now to put the whole thing together, I'll take my tube and I'll take the end cap without the slit and put it over the end with the eye hole in it to block light. I'll take my other end cap with the slit and I'll arrange the slit so that it's horizontal like the horizon while this hole is straight up. And then I can slide it in and I'll get the orientation correct. Next step, I'll put the compact disc into its slot you can see how that fits really nicely and the mirror faces the slit and here's my compact disc ready to go here's what's going on I've got a compact disc and the compact disc encodes music into a spiral of pits and those pits when I look at them close up with a scanning electron microscope form lines that are spaced apart just a little bit further apart than a wavelength of visible light. Now when light hits a set of lines like this, it is bent to the side at an angle. And each different wavelength of light is bent at a different angle. Red light is bent more than blue light. So when I put a light source onto the compact disc, each different wavelength of light bounces off at a different angle. Let me show you how it works. I have a compact disc and I have an incandescent light bulb that puts out all wavelengths of visible light. So as I reflect, the light comes from the incandescent light, bounces off the compact disc, and each different color bounces at a different angle. So you see the spectrum of light with all colors present, red through blue. You might notice that this is a tiny light source. And many light sources around us are quite broad, like a fluorescent light fixture. And in order to get a good spectrum, we need to have a small light source. That's why in our tube, we have a slit. Well, you might think that, well, a slit isn't tiny. Well, a pinhole would work, but it's actually hard when you're looking through this tube to point a pinhole at a light source. By having the slit, I make it restricted enough to give me a good spectrum, but much easier to point at and find a light source. In summary, we have the compact disc with lines in it, making a diffraction grating that breaks the light up into its component colors. We have a tube to shield against extraneous light sources. We have a narrow slit to restrict the light coming in to a small source. And we have an eye hole that lets me look in and see the spectrum of light. So now you have your very own spectrometer. What do you do with it? Start out in a room with an incandescent light. Point this at an incandescent light, look through the hole, and you'll see that all colors of light are present, the entire spectrum of light. Then look at a fluorescent light. You'll see the fluorescent, even though it might look white, just like the incandescent, has only certain colors of light present and they show up as lines at different colors. Then you can go outside. Don't look at the sun, but you can look at a white cloud and get the same spectrum as the sunlight. You can also just look at a white piece of paper. One interesting thing to notice when you look at the solar spectrum is that black lines appear across the spectrum of the sun. Those are called Fraunhofer lines. Go look them up and find out what makes them. While you're outside, after nightfall, you can look at mercury vapor lights. They put out many different bright lines of light. You can look at the yellowish sodium vapor lights. They have a narrow set of yellow lights. It might look as one line or maybe two very close lines. You can also look at neon lights. So look at all the different colored neon lights through your spectroscope. The spectroscope shows you 
the colors of light put out by every different light source in the world around you. It's your truth teller for light.